Hey guys, really fast before the video starts, I have a very special announcement about the anime version of my Kanji mask um, coming up in my next video, and I'm pretty sure you guys are not going to want to miss it, so uh, make sure you go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out. I'm also going to be announcing it on the same day on my social media, so go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at XXKSenpai, XX. You're really not going to want to miss out because you may or may not have the opportunity to be getting a mask. So. Make sure you stay tuned and subscribe. Okay, let's get on with the video. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? I am back. Yes, your friendly neighborhood senpai is back. Finally decided to upload. <laughs> no, um, yeah, sorry I don't have a, a timed upload schedule. I would love to upload on a schedule, upload like video every week, every two weeks, every month, but I can't even manage that. <laughs> um, I just have a lot of stuff going on in my daily life. I have a job that I don't like, but everybody has a job that they don't like, that they have to go to almost every day. So, um, in between my free time of doing chores and all the stuff that adults do, I finally had time to work on this and it is done. And uh, no, I did not get a haircut. This is a wig. <laughs> I'm trying to go for the whole um, little Japanese boy going on look uh, with this slight case of infection. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be the live action Kaneki Ken. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make that mask. Um, a little backstory before we do. I already made a different mask. And uh, let me go get it real fast. I'm so unprofessional. I feel like Naomi Joan. John? John? Naomi John? Anyways. <laughs> and uh, now that I'm looking at this thing, it looks way different than what I made. <laughs> what I just finished making yesterday. But here is my other Tokyo Ghoul mask that I made for the anime. If you want to go see how I made this, go make sure to go ahead and check out my other video. I'll make sure to leave it down in the description below. I thought... <laughs> this was hard to make, but yeah, the live action one is way harder. <laughs> and just to give you guys a little sneak peek, make sure you go stay until the end uh, to see the final product, but a um, little sneak peek here. Ooh, I'm not. So if, if you guys want to know how to make this mask, <laughs> this mask, please keep on watching. I mean, I don't sew and it's really hard to sew material like this. So um, for example, if you look at a reference picture, I'll put it up here. <laughs> These little parts are supposed to be separated. They're supposed to all be individual strips sewn together by this red thread. Um, I'm not doing that. You can get the effect just by pretty, pretty closely with this and it's really hard to sew through this. So I did that instead. And uh, like for hemming the bottom, I didn't hem the bottom because it doesn't fray and it would just take more time, more hot glue because I don't sew. <laughs> for example, also, the strap, <laughs> it had a buckle, I used Velcro instead, and I also hot glued the strap, I didn't sew it. Not recommended, just as a heads up, because it doesn't stay together very well. But you can do it and it works for quite a long period of time, you just have to be a little careful with your, your little work of art that you've created, so, I don't know. <laughs> One little thing, real fast. I um, started making this live action mask closer to when the movie released, which was around a year ago or so, probably a little more, and <laughs> I made it before I went on my break, and I didn't finish it because I couldn't work on anything during my break um, because my laptop was broken. So I decided to finish an old project and just get this done with. So another thing, <laughs> my, I may have gotten a better laptop and like, you know, a laptop that actually works, but uh, my camera died. <laughs> so I have all of my old footage still, but the new footage that I finished mask on, um, <laughs> I, uh, um, I was laughing because my fiance just like crept by. <laughs> in towels to take a shower. <laughs> oh, that was great. Anyways, <laughs> um, camera. That's what I was talking about. If the, no, what am I saying? If the video style that I was shot in will change, I'm going to be doing towards the end just little update videos. I can't actually record my process of what I'm doing because I don't have a tripod. Tripod? I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> tripod. Um, for my camera, so I can't record all of it. So I hope you guys aren't too mad at me 
but I worked really hard on this and I couldn't just let it go another year or so without getting finished. Uh, forgive me, I'm sweating. It's like 100 degrees in California right now. <laughs> My air is having trouble. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if you're new here, please be sure to give this video a like if you enjoy and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. Um, yeah, let's, let's just go. I've talked for long enough. I tend to talk a lot. I cannot speak. I'm just gonna go. Bye. <laughs> what do you think? Should we start the video? Should we start the video? I don't know if we should. I can level you some more instead. No, she says... Alright guys, so for this tutorial we're going to be doing a voiceover because I don't want to add captions to everything. It would take a really long time and this video is already going to be really long, so sorry in advance. What I've done so far is taken a plastic mask from the craft store and taken also two layers of warbla, put them together, and molded that over the mask. You're going to want to make sure you have lots of reference photos and what I've done so far is kind of square off the nose, get the nostrils formed, and make that little pinched part underneath the nose as well. Once you've gotten the general shape of the mask, you're going to want to go ahead and sketch out where the teeth are going to go and the hinges for the jaw, and also where the mask is going to cut off according to your face, pretty much. Now the final version of this did change a little bit. I had to add more onto the mask, but you'll see that later on. Once you have everything kind of sketched out, you're going to want to take a very sharp pair of scissors and carefully cut along those lines. Now for the corners of the mouth, you're only going to want to cut about halfway up, and if you're having trouble, it is easier to heat up the warbla and then cut it. But you're basically just going to be cutting the mask in half in a very careful way. So once you have the two pieces apart and you are kind of happy with how it looks, you're going to start forming the sides and getting that center part trimmed up. You want it to be as straight as possible because that's where the zipper is going to be and you know it's kind of in the center of the face. It needs to be perfect. And you're going to want to have a space in between the two pieces enough for your zipper to go. So make sure you don't cut too much off, but you don't want to have no space at all for the zipper. And this is the extremely fun part, sarcasm, of molding the mask and getting the jaw hinges to line up. This part took an insane amount of time to complete and make sure it looks somewhat decent. But that's basically what you want it to look like. Now the good thing with Warbla is that although it is expensive, you can use almost all of the scraps and the waste products that you create. So again, taking that reference picture, you're going to heat up all of your Warbla scraps and you can almost mold it like clay. Um, you just have to keep reheating it. And uh, also please be careful if you're using Warbla or a heat gun because these things do get hot. You can burn the Warbla and you can also burn yourself, so please be careful. But your hands are gonna hurt after a while, but uh, you finally got a strip that you're gonna place on the mask. Make sure you heat up the mask a little bit, not too much, and the strip, and then carefully stick it on there. And you wanna heat up both of the materials that you wanna put together at the same time because um, it won't stick if one of them is not warmed up. And then once you're happy with that shape, go ahead and cut off the excess and start on the bottom jaw. Again, rolling out more scraps of Warbla, hands hurting, but it's okay because at least we're reusing things. We don't waste nothing. Throughout this whole project, I'm pretty sure I had a reference photo with me at all times and also from different angles, which really helps in doing parts like this. All right, now that we have the final shape of the gums kind of laid out, we're going to go ahead and smooth those down and just try to make them less prominent so they won't stick out too much uh, from the leather. And I just kind of use my thumbs and my fingernails to just kind of smooth out the edges without squishing everything entirely. I also had to add in extra pieces of war blood to kind of fill things out and just make them more true to the mask. Alright, now that we kind of have every, everything smoothed out and shaped the way that we want it to, again, make sure that you, everything lines up correctly and you have space in the front of the mask as well as on the sides for the hinges. 
Now we're going to be heating up some more scrap pieces of Warbla and we're going to start forming the teeth. And this part, along with lots of other parts of the mask, will take a long time. You're basically forming little teardrop pointy pieces and making a ton of those. All different sizes, stuck on the mask, individually, one at a time. It's, it's going to take a while, guys. And you're lucky I don't show all this footage to you because it would be very boring and half of it is me off camera trying to mold things. But again, that's why a reference photo is so handy. Um, you can kind of gauge how big the teeth need to be and how many there need to be. Um, I didn't count how many teeth I put on there, but I guess I could. Alright, so it looks like I did 20 teeth for this top row. Um, impressive me, and I believe I did 18 teeth for this bottom row. And keep in mind the teeth are very close together, so don't be afraid to get them a little close, but you still want to have room for the zipper again. Even if it's not much room, there still needs to be just a little bit. Cat break. Pumpkin. Oh, We're in the cone of shame. Yeah, I gotta itch those ears. If you can't do it. <laughs> Okay, this is what I have so far from when you guys last saw it, it probably looks a little bit different. Um, I added these little side pieces where this line is, right here. It about looks like that on the side. You want that line, that curved line right here, and then this little wavy line with um, a space. And I would have showed you guys that process, but it wasn't that fun because it's just a lot of heating the warbler back up and readjusting and adding more if I need to. But next, I don't know what's next, I have to think. <laughs> okay, once you have all of your molding in place, you're done doing what you want to do to this. Make sure you have everything the way you want it, make sure all the teeth are as pointy as you can get them, make sure all the lines are where they're supposed to be. Do like a final check and make sure everything lines up because you can't really change it once the leather is on there. So that's the part we're going to do next. Fake leather. But still leather. Okay, so this is kind of how I start when I did my other mask. You just kind of find a place to anchor the fabric and stretch it a little bit so you can see some of the details. Then you go in afterwards with hot glue and glue underneath here and just go by section by section until you get all the way across the mask and get it all fitted to here and get everything cut out. And you have to cut out the teeth too. So I'll show you this when I get that done. Okay, just a quick little update. I have started on the bottom jaw. For the lip lines, you want to kind of trace out where it's going to meet the teeth and then cut it and then glue it. Because if you try to glue it down and then cut it, this line is not going to be straight at all. So cut it and then glue it down. With this, I started with the sides and then I kind of formed it around this little pieces. And then I'm gonna finish this little gum line and wrap this bottom part and we'll see how it looks. Right, here's the jaw piece all wrapped. As you can see I had to cut a little slit down to fold it but it's hidden pretty well. It's definitely hidden better than the slit on the nose. I'm not super pleased with that. I probably should have put it on one of these sides here but it's probably not gonna show up unless you get super close so I'm not too worried about it. 
so yeah here it is so far um i do have to fix the sides this side doesn't light up all the way correctly but i'll try and fix it and next we're gonna move on to probably the neck and the eye patch okay um so what i've done now is i've made the eye patch piece and the two bolts the bolts do look different than they do in the anime as well as the eye piece so that was a little bit more fun to make. Fun um, being sarcastic. For this, you're basically just cutting out a square, and I basically you heat it up and then you pinch it and you create the lines and you fold it and then once it hardens, you can kind of get the final shape out of it. And then I put the holes in it for the little eyelets. Now these eyelets have a little jam on them, but I didn't see that when I picked them up, so I'm just gonna put them in backwards, and they should work just fine bolts. I completely rolled up a bunch of my warbler scraps. That's why there's a couple little wrinkles in it. But yeah, you just have to make a line down the side and yeah, a solid warbler. <laughs> kind of feels like mini bricks, mini rocks. I'll do the final designs on these when I paint them. So I'm not going to worry about these anymore. Just for now, we're gonna work on this. We're gonna cover it and add the eyelids. Let's go. All right, this is the eye patch all covered and with the eyelids on it. I think it turned out pretty good, but there are these smaller details that go along the side and on these little crosses. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that, but maybe I'll just like scratch the little details into it. There's just like a border that goes all the way around. And then on the little X's, it looks like there's an indentation. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna scratch those details on there and see how that works. All right, so I know it's not even yet on the bottom, but I was just trying to get a rough estimate of like how wide it's gonna be for my neck. I'm gonna make these even too, but what I've done so far is basically cut out a strip to go along this whole thing. And then I cut out a U for the jaw and I have hand stitched it on. Yeah, and it goes up to about halfway on the side of the jaw, and it just kind of flows down this side, so when pieces are put together, it just kind of goes like a line down the side. We have the front slit cut out, so we can put the zipper in there. Probably gonna put Velcro in the back, and we try to sew as little things as possible on this channel. So I'm going to be hot gluing these parts down to hem them once I have them even. Yeah, just trying to hot glue as much stuff as I can. The only reason why I didn't hot glue this is because leather does not stick to leather. Fun fact. Okay, sorry if the lighting's bad, but here is where I'm at so far with the mask. I added the zipper in there, which was a really, really difficult task. <laughs> um, but I have the zipper in the front as well. I have hot glued it, and it looks great. <laughs> And um, I also had to reheat it and fix the chin to make it um, project a little bit more. So there we go. Every time that I look at the reference picture, I always see new things. Like how there's going to be straps up here. There's like, yeah, it's hard to explain. But there's just so many little details that I keep seeing when I look back at the new, or when I look back at the mask. But for the zipper, what I had to do is add two layers of craft foam, the little just sheets, like this, and I layered those little strips and I put them onto the zipper because the way that I made the teeth for like the top and the bottom, they're really really close together. And in the picture on the movie, they're really really close together, just about like this, but somehow the zipper still has to get through there. It works but you can't really unzip it when you're wearing it. Does that make sense? Because I don't think they could do that in the movie either. And they made it look like it when he unzips his face in the movie, but it just, yeah, I don't, I don't know how they did that. I think it was just special effects. I think you actually have to take the mask off and unzip it and then wear it like that. Here, I might as well show you, right? So the way that it unzips is you kind of fold the zipper under here and you push it along and it'll eventually go over to the other side. So that's how you zip it and unzip it. I will be replacing this little tab with one that matches the design of the mask, but it's really important to leave this extra zipper space over here because then you won't be able to open the mouth all the way. The zipper just kind of disappears when the mask is open, so that leads me to believe that 
it just goes behind the mask and disappears and it's over here behind it where you can't see it. So really important to leave that extra little space here. So I think next I'm going to be adding the little um, leather panels on the inside so then when you open the mask there's no gap and it stays together by itself. Oh and for the back, I know that there's a zipper, I actually noticed it in the movie that there's a zipper for the back but I do velcro, nobody's going to see the back. And I didn't buy enough zippers, I only bought two zippers. <laughs> so we're making do with two Velcro for the back. All right, let's go. All right, I figured you guys should see this thing in actual good lighting. And I've gotten a little bit farther on it. Again, I'm really sorry that I can't actually set my phone down and show you guys what I'm doing, but I don't have a tripod or a stand or anything for my phone. So it wouldn't really be efficient to just be working with one hand and trying to work on this. It's just not possible. So. Step by step, I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing. For the mouth, this is it zipped open and I've added the little side panels so you can't actually see through it. I have to, I've just hot glued it for now so it'll stay, but I need to go back and reinforce it and sew it in there on both sides. For this part, I've like reinforced this bottom part on the inside and sewed it and then hot glued over top of it. It looks like a giant mess. I couldn't actually have the strap just go straight across because that's just not how the dynamic of the mask works. So, and I'll have two more rivets on the side of the nose. Um, there's no strap here. There's going to be straps coming off over here. Um, yeah, just pretty much reinforcing stuff to make sure this thing isn't going to fall apart. I have to add the velcro. Actually, no. I forgot I was going to be doing a belt buckle. I kind of just want to do velcro, but we'll see how it goes. This part is supposed to be sewn, but it would take me forever because this is really thick material, so I just don't have the energy or the time or the sewing machine to pierce through this and sew it, so I just hot glued it. Like my last one. <laughs> Alright, so this is what I got so far. I added the little eyelets on the nose. I had ended up having to cut off the end of these little eyelets and then glue them on there. As well as um, glue on these little uh, straps for the strings. And this little string on the side. And there's a string over here too. Next, I've marked out where the bolts are going to go on the neck with hot glue. <laughs> and I'm going to start on those. I'm going to be painting them. I just have these. I'm going to put these on top and flatten them down as much as I can and paint on the rest of the details. And I'm going to paint these little zipper tabs I made as well. I don't know how good you can see that. Probably not that good. But for this one, I just cut out a bunch of mini squares and stuck them onto each other and then looped around a little thing for the top. And this one, I made a little cylinder and then I rolled out Warbler really, really, really thin and wrapped around in a little swirly pattern all around and then just kind of rolled it to get the pattern to stay. It's really difficult to make and while, oh, <laughs> while I was making it, uh, Bagheera decided he wanted to chew on it as a chew toy. So I had to make another one. I'm going to go ahead and paint those now and then stick them up. I look like a potato and while I'm waiting for paint to dry and this is makeup from last night. <laughs> yeah, hi. This is my face. What's up? This is why it takes me so long to get uh, videos done. I'm literally just waiting for paint to dry. Um, and also I have a job and chores to do and a bunch of other things. So I remain busy all the time. Little intermission, you know. Sorry that I can't really set this up on a tripod once again to record this, but um, it's just what happens when you don't have a camera and you don't have the stand for your phone. It's just what happens. Sorry. <laughs> you get updates like these where I just come and I film what I've done so far. And um, yeah, let's get back to the tutorial, shall we? Hmm? So it may not look the best right now, but I have a light silver acrylic paint painted on these. I'm going to go back in with a darker one and put in some shading because um, these need to look more like they're sunken in because I didn't think ahead and do that. So I'm going to do that and add some shading to these and this little line and let's just do that. Okay, ready? And... Alright, looks awesome so far. 
We have added the bolts to it as well as snipped off the zipper tabs and put on the awesome ones. I've also started to go ahead and add the red thread uh, with some very thick thread and a strong needle which I also broke about three needles uh, working on this. But just make sure you follow some lines that you've pre-scratched down on there with some sharpie and stitch away. Alright, next you're going to be painting on the silver for the teeth and doing some shading on those and then coating them in equal parts water and Elmer's glue. You want to do about three coats and then once you do that, you are all done. Side-by-side side comparison, which one is creepier? You know, I'm not sure, I just, I don't know, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. I don't know which one's creepier, but, uh... <laughs> uh <laughs> what's wrong? Something the matter? Do I have something on my face? Alright guys, that is it for now. Um, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed. It really helps me out a lot. Again, if you haven't checked out my other Kaneki Mask video, please be sure to go check it out. And uh, feel free to go on a video spree. Why not? Just, just go do it. Kaneki's telling you to do it, so go do it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'm pretty sure that is all for now. So I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.